15 unique achievements, some that only 1% of players have, and the ability to form a unique special pirate nation, all within the first 50 years of the game. My name is Ludi, and today we'll show why Portugal is such a unique experience. If we get 8,000 likes on this video, I'll be doing a part 2 which shows the next 50 years as a special pirate republic. Also subscribe if you enjoy my channel, I'm trying to get 100,000 before the end of 2021 and in return I'll do a mega campaign. Portugal is clearly one of the easiest nations to start your EU4 adventure as we start off as a pretty decent sized nation as well as we can get an alliance with the Castilians as we are historical friends from the beginning and we also have another alliance with the English. When it comes to our internal affairs obviously you give the plus one privileges for the estates, you sell the titles to get a bunch of money up front and then you go to the economic screen so that you re set the values for developing provinces which means you can develop your provinces for 41 development make sure that you also give supremacy over the crown and the 25 reduction for advisor costs this is quite important as we're actually going to get the prestige guy since he is a level 2 50% cheaper so overall this guy is 75% cheaper from day one we're going to do the same with the uh, Simio da Costa we can even promote him once one more thing we're going to do is we're going to delete the fort in Avora and the fort in Ceuta we start off with 5% professionalism so we will be recruiting 5,000 infantrymen so we get 16,000 infantry and 4,000 cav and after that we'll be slackening recruitment to get some manpower and because we will be recruiting the free company later on once we need them you want to recruit at least three more light ships from day one so that after we can build our flagship you have five starting light ships I recommend you break off two of these guys and the three light ships that you have you assign Diogo Gomez which is your starting explorer portugal is the only nation that starts with an explorer so you can actually start exploring the new world from day one without having exploration ideas unlocked we've also set our rivals as tunis morocco and Tlemcen, and basically the north african countries another really important thing you need to do is go for the unique portuguese marines that lets you recruit 10 percent force limit as marines and naval barrages cost 40 percent cheaper this is a really great modifier that Portugal takes advantage of. That means that whenever you have extra sailors you can just use them and recruit the unique marines that can disembark on islands a lot faster than regular troops can. Basically what marines do. I also recommend that you leave the rest of your fleet that is not exploring on hunt pirates in your main trade node to prevent the Moroccans and the Tlemcheni from raiding your coastlines. Alright we got our two ships extra here so that means we can build our flagship I canceled the Marines as I don't need them for the next five years and guys make sure your flagship is actually a light ship and you have some specific Portuguese unique traits for the flagship such as the Portuguese navigators that gives you fleet exploration range plus a hundred and this is vital if you want to get the achievement the navigator since it allows you to explore the Asian parts extremely early on in the game naval barrage cost minus 40% scales with the other one so you get minus 80% barrage cost you can literally take every coastal fort for almost no mana points as well as trade power per ship and fleet plus two in 47 your leader is going to take charge of the nation before that you have a regency so you cannot attack anyone for the first two years of the game it's time for war against the Moroccans of course if you can call in the Castilians and whatever other allies you might have we will be gunning for this fort in Tangiers of course and you can always assign objectives to the Castilians if you like them to take care of a particular area once your flagship is finished building make sure you bring it over to the main fleet and merge it with the main fleet that is helping out in the siege of Tangiers and now that the fleet is here I want you to take a really good look at what's about to happen barrage this for 10 mana points that is ridiculous man hey La Renaissance has just appeared, everybody. All right, well, you know what? We're going to peace out the Moroccans now. We're going to give all the Granada to the Castilians as we really don't care about them too much. And it helps out Castile, so why not help a friend, right? And when it comes to Morocco, we're taking Tangiers for ourselves. And we were lucky, actually, because Castile and Aragon decided they want to take these two provinces. So we're going to...
to give these out to them. We also take as much money as we can, as well as humiliation. We're going for the humiliation because we want to have above 50 PP, which offers us one more of each mana point, as well as because we took the province of Tangiers, we get the conquest of Tangiers that gives us another 150 admin points. So in order to get more admin points even, we're going to be attacking the nation of Telemchen, and we're going to be using the Humiliate Rival CB, which means that we'll be gunning for the show of strength outcome. Whilst you're doing all of these wars, remember to continue to explore the new world with your ships. You should be able to reach all the way to the Caribbean and everywhere around there from the very first days because of the amazing flagship that remember you need to merge in your exploration fleet now. The Tlemcheni general that they start off with is super good so be careful with them. Try and bait him into your forts. If you do that you should definitely be winning all the battles. Booyah Shaka. Imagine 1451, we already know what's happening in the south of Africa. You might find yourself with very little manpower after these couple of wars. Just remember that you can always recruit the marines and I highly recommend that you do so. We're gonna need a little bit more money here. Van Loan is enough and that means we can get one unit of marines for the time being. That will help us out with landing wherever needs landing. Semper Fi! Don't you try to run away from me you filthy Tagurdian! Du bist ein starken Weipen. Well, hello there, people of the Caribbean. I heard you have some gold around here. Looks like it's time to see who's gonna win this epic showdown over here. Will it be the Chad Portuguese or the not so Chad Lemcheni? It was us! Who would have thought? You're lucky, Tugurd. I'm gonna just white piece you. I don't really care about you very much. En la piste de la resistance. Tlemchen's gonna give me the show of strength, which offers a hundred of each mana points. Look at those bad boys go up. 500 already for admin. So we're super close, actually, to getting admin tech 5. And what do you know, ladies and gents? We actually can go for the admin ideas here. As well as, I actually want to mention that you should start your golden era around the same time. In fact, if I started the golden era a couple of seconds ago, I could have taken that technology for 10% cheaper. But anyway, there you go. Now we can set the native policy to native repression to get an extra 20 colonists. And we're going to start colonizing the province of Cape Verde first on our way to the new world. Once you get your first colonist, you can also do Beyond Cape Bojador, which offers 20% settler chance. This means we start with a 36% settler chance. This is absolutely massive and it means we're gonna colonize Cape Verde extremely fast. After your first colony has finished, I recommend you colonize this area, send your colonists over here. Also take note that you need to get your special ability for Portugal that gives 50% settler increase once you have 800 splendor points. And also whilst you're doing all of these and you're colonizing, send your conquistador to explore the new world. You can automatically do this with the hunt for the seven cities button. You can also do colonize West Africa mission that offers a second explorer and even the colonization of West Africa can be done pretty early on. Once you have that second explorer make sure you put him to good use so he can help out exploring the world. 115 settlers and 35% settler chance on our first Caribbean province in 58. This is ridiculously broken, man. Since we have the claims on Kilwa, we will be starting a small colonial war. Imagine exploring the western parts of the New World by 1460, guys. Literally, only Portugal can do this, by the way. Take that, you smelly Kilwans. I believe Kilwa is smart enough now to accept our terms. We're gonna vassalize them. We shall name this colonial holding Mozambique. Historical gameplay. Guess who just arrived into the Indonesian lands? It's us. We just discovered this. In fact, we know pretty much everything there is to know about the New World and the East Indies already. Just to put this into perspective, perspective, we've been colonizing two provinces at the same time, Costa do Oro, which is already a full colony of ours, because we assigned the colonists here, so we had the 30% settler chance in this province. The Bahama 
plus we had no colonists as such no settler chance and it's only at 500 so essentially a settler make sure that you colonize a province two times fast we have assigned the colonists to finish off the Bahamas now we're not getting any more colonies in this area instead we're gonna be no being the nation of Congo this is gonna be an extremely quick war we literally want this one province and that is everything I'm taking from them there you go now we can core it up so after we've core this we've doubled our colonial range without having to colonize anything here and that is just massive brain especially if you want to get the navigator achievement early on and the Bahamas has been colonized but now we can switch over to a pirate nation however before we do so I need to colonize a few more provinces around here so that once I do switch over to a pirate nation I have some easy lands to conquer from my neighbors that means we're gonna colonize Havana Ulala first because it has a really cool monument that we definitely want for ourselves once your colonist has arrived in Havana call him back and send him over to Borado because we need to border the Central American tribes in order to get some lands from them friendly acquisition I recommend you abandon the colony that you have in Borado after you've gotten your claims in the Central American part as we can still core this up without the adjacent province because we are within coring range from Havana and as such use the second colonist to get a colony in the South African parts. We now can also go for the second idea set and of course go for expansion ideas so we can continue expanding like crazy. It's time to get rid of the Mexicans in here and make space for Portuguese people. A couple of wars later and we can basically cuck over the Americans by dividing North and South America in two separate continents with our amazing mixtec line as I like to call it. And guess what we got not so satisfied state one of the early achievements as the Portuguese whoa -ho, everybody look at that we got our first crown colony over here La Chupacabra we've been a little bit aggressive in uh, the Brazilian lands and because of that we actually managed to get five provinces from the natives themselves we've basically relocated them sure let's call it that and uh, we can make some course here now oh boy the Aragonese have just attacked Castile and I have no troops on the European continent at all. But I'm pretty sure that they don't want anything from me. So I'll just let them fight it out and mind my own business in the colonies. Wait a second. This is actually insane. So colonial policy gives me the option to either get plus 10 settlers until the end of the game or global terror. Obviously the settlers, man. Holy snaps. That's insane. That means that we're getting 155 settlers in 1481 dude that is massive I think it's time that we colonize Louisiana and set up a new city called Novo Orleans because it's not French okay and we've just integrated Kilwa that was insanely fast I really love the new privileges and especially the papal legate it makes life so much easier now also we can do the go westwards mission and this also means we can get our first colony in Indonesia in 1482 bruh all because we vassalized Kilwa earlier than we could integrate them so that once we had the province of lesser Nabangadang we had the coring range so we could start integrating them that is why you should use the claims from the missions to vassalize Kilwa before you even can start integrating them plan for the future everybody rejoice the nation of Brazil is amongst us and we're gonna make them a self-governing colony so they can get their own provinces faster than than a crown colony. Some pretty intense war going on in here, man. I really hope the Castilians win this, but I don't see them winning against so many English and Aragonese troops. And I'm not gonna help them. World's best ally. Oh boy! Looks like we're on the way to El Dorado, the DLC? No! The famous Golden City! It would seem like we can start our assault on the nation of Nacho Machuchu, and this way we can also drag in their allies and take five 
five provinces for another colony. Ya can't run away from me, boy. I'm going to stack and vibe on you. That's probably the worst Scottish accent I've ever done, I'll be honest. Wait, no, don't punish me, Haggis Lord. I think we should be able to beat some out. I can take actually everything that I want, and I'm going to do that right now. Let's go. Guess who discovered the Japanese islands 200 years earlier? It's this guy. And since we have one extra colonist now, we're going to be sending him to the Micronesian lands to get the extra settler chance increase from the new monument. Settler chance increase and global settlers plus 25 because of the colonial enthusiasm that we currently have means we're getting 245 settlers per year, dude. It's insane how fast we're getting provinces this way. All right, this war is done as well. Let's piece them out. We're going to be taking as much as we can take from them. This is all within the Louisiana region. We colonized the island of Diego Garcia so that we get a claim on the Maldives and then call in their allies in the south of India, if you know what I mean. Big brain, so we can get our Indian foothold, sir. And because we discovered a province in India, we get the event Vasco da Gama and we get the province of Goa directly without having to go to war with them, which means we just did the navigator achievement in 1490, guys. And Louisiana was colonized, which means we can get a private enterprise, which in turn means that we have just done yet another achievement. I am talking about the power of three. That means we also can do Colonial Caribbean, our mission that gives trade efficiency for our colonies here. So why not? And with our access to India over here, we can start expanding and forming some proper trade companies in this area, actually. Hey, we just got Micronesia, so that means we got an extra 10 settlers per year. And once we upgrade this, we can get a lot more eventually. Guess what, guys? We're actually 26 years ahead of tech because we've been stacking a lot of admin and diplo since we're not going to war and we're not wasting it on anything else, which in turn means that we can start circumnavigating the globe, getting another achievement from this also. By the way, guys, it's actually really important if you plan to switch over to pirates that whenever you colonize five provinces in the Caribbean, that you automatically start giving these provinces, such as Kanimar over here, to your already established colonial nation. Otherwise, it's going to form another colonial nation, and we don't want that to happen right now. Hey, would you look at that, everybody? We got the first circumnavigation, which is another achievement, as well as it gives us some prestige. Not bad. So now we already have quite a few achievements unlocked. A new colony takes fruit in the south of America, and boy, is it going to be expanding into the gold areas. I think it's also time that we invest a little bit in our future pirate nation. We're going to start building these monuments here so that once we take them as the pirates, we already have something to go with. I feel like the AI is using the favor system a lot more nowadays. Another achievement in the pirate bay of Janjira, where we need to have 50% of the Gujarat trade node as private tiers. So we assigned our entire fleet here and because of that we actually have 61% of the Gujarat trade node. Really easy and chill achievement to get to be honest. And one more achievement, networking, have 100% spy network in three rival nations. I should have gotten this achievement a very long time ago. Reality is that it's a really easy achievement to get and I just never even bothered with. I think it's about time we switch over to the pirates. Before we do that, what we are doing right now is we sent our colonist and we made him come back so he can go do another colony adjacent because that is everything we need in order to do the pirates in the Caribbean or no pirates in the Caribbean achievement. We don't need to fully colonize those provinces. We just need to have started the process of colonizing them. And we're going to start a new achievement chain right now. In order to trigger the event that lets us switch over and become a pirate nation, we need to start privateering our own node, the Caribbean, and we'll be doing that right now. Well, 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 the golden age of piracy has begun in the Caribbeans, boys. Let's see what happens if we click this. Imagine 58% privateering in the Caribbean. I mean, it's a historical game, everybody. We're going to use a few of our points over here to develop the province of Bahamas. In fact, we're going to use all of our points to develop the province of Bahamas. Well, the Buccaneer Battalion appeared here too. And the Pirate Republic is here, everybody. Now we can choose to either be a pirate or...
or kill the pirates, but they still spawn. So what we're going to do before that is we're going to release all of these absolute Chad nations here as independent nations because we don't want Portugal to have that much strength in the new world and because it's going to make it easier for us as a pirate nation to deal with these independent entities. We're going to go for a pirate's life for me. Let's abandon the old Portuguese ways and choose to become the chattiest nation in the world with the coolest unit sprites and the most insanely epic flag. It also means that we got new achievements, Yar Har, a pirate's life for me, whereas New Providence, which we just switched over to, we gotta own all of the Caribbean, which in contrast to the Portuguese, no pirates in the Caribbean, seems kind of pepega, doesn't it? Guess what? We also have our own mission tree as pirates in the Caribbean, and boy is it an interesting one. We also have the option of forming various nations within the Caribbean, and because we are a pirate republic, we can raid everybody's coastline and absolutely shrek them to pieces. So if you guys want to see this happen, leave a like. And we'll start our pirate adventure as New Providence, taking over all of the Caribbeans and pushing those dirty Portuguese back to Europe. By the way, that's why we switched our capital here, because we're going to take their European provinces too. So let's get this to 8,000 likes, and don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy watching my content. I really want to reach 100,000 subs by the end of this year. Also, find out how I got the big blue blob in just 20 years by clicking over here. And I want to give a very big thank you to all of my channel members, Patreon members, as well as my Twitch supporters. I really wouldn't be able to do this without all of your support. You guys are absolutely amazing.